Okay, got it. Khan Sahib. Oh. Namaskar, Kaap Sahib. How are you? How are you? Thank you, sir. Shah Sahib, you are in the center, not in the side. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. हाँ हाँ बताइए आपके यहाँ से इको आ रही है बहुत ज्यादा तो आपको एक एक लॉगिन से म्यूट आउट करना पड़ेगा उसको म्यूट कर लीजिए ओके गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स उटे familiar with the situation and let's concentrate on the way out so that each one of us can give one or two specific suggestions which we can uh, you know include in a paper which we can prepare after our discussion may i request ashok bhan saab to initiate the discussion in 3 minutes <laughs> ashok bhan saab and then we have kapil kak saab and other friends yes sir let me let me start by saying that the renewed spate of innocent killing in the valley is yet again an example of kashmiri killing the kashmiris and uh, how long we have to put an end to it the civil society has to rise to the occasion the political class has to come out now entire religious and spiritual leaders have to also put in their contribution and there is a dire need in the new context of an interfaith i will not say interfaith i'll say intra community dialogue because killing one and scaring a thousand is an old strategy adopted by the militants and the security forces claim that militancy is on the run we will not get into that debate whether it is on the run or it is on a revival or renewed strategy mode that is for the security experts to say but as a civil society activist my only concern and the concern of all of us should be and is how to save the innocent lives from the beastly and uh, brutal attacks by these kashmiri hot headed gun wielding pistol wielding youngsters so i have couple of points to make a that let me be the devil's advocate for a while say that hot pursuit is all right what government is pursuing going after the militants going after the terrorists that's fine and it has to be not associated with any collateral damage that also we see that government ensures that from time to time but of course that collateral damage cannot be also ruled out in such an operation number 2 that it's not operation all out which alone can resolve this issue this issue requires the people's engagement civil society engagement citizens engagement and there is hardly any process in operation in that direction 
there is only a slogan maybe it is well intended slogan that is the development that's all right i want to remind my friends that in 75 when the accord between mrs gandhi and sheikh abdullah took place sheikh abdullah con conscientiously said that let me give moratorium to politics and start the development phase in jammu and kashmir and he started it very vigorously development may not be an issue काफी डिस्टर्बेंस आ रहा है कहीं से कैन यू म्यूट अदर्स तो सर ऐसा है कि दैट कश्मीर ओवर द पास्ट फ्यू इयर्स पर्टिकुलरली आफ्टर ऑगस्ट जीरो नाइन प्लीज कंटिन्यू आई एम ट्राइंग टू सेंड ए मैसेज ये कहां से हो रहा है पता नहीं बट ऑफ द पार्टी साहब आप म्यूट कर सकते हैं बीइंग द एडमिन आप म्यूट कर दीजिए इसको आप भान साहब को और अपने आप को छोड़ के बाकी सबको म्यूट कर दीजिए अह लेट भान साहब कंटिन्यू आई एम ट्राइंग फ्रॉम दैट प्लीज हो गया ना प्लीज आई वाज सेइंग दैट आफ्टर 2019 अगस्त आफ्टर द आर्टिकल 370 वाज मेड in operable there have been certain developments in the valley particularly that uh, most of the civil society became uh became a victim of a situation what we say that they became almost entire valley was caged and they were put almost in detention for a long time and that psyche of detention is a hurt psyche with the political spectrum the civil society also became the victim of that policy and civil society also became the hurt hurt compounded in the civil society psyche also now after the release of it was followed with covid etc i will not go into that ashoki please conclude in a minute so my suggestion at the moment would be a that we need to garner support of the civil society and elders in this society who can exert some moral pressure on these young gun totting pistol totting guys number 2 that there may be a need for an intra community vigorous dialogue and engagement at this moment so that the kashmir youngsters gun totting understand that there is something called kashmiri pandits also who have a right to live in this part third i have been saying this that in these 32 years the muslim society of kashmir particularly the educated muslims and the trading class of muslim community 
have been traveling all across the country and they have studied here. They have benefited from the system and they should go back. They should be garnered to act as peacemakers in that. And that is why I say that Kashmir civil society has to rise to the occasion. It's not one-sided. It is both-sided. The Kashmiri youth, which is an educated youth, which has an exposure towards the global happenings, which has the facilities far better than in any other part of this country, they have to realize that this is a land of opportunities and it's a big opportunity. And they have to contribute against the terrorist violence. Because innocent killing is targeted to innocent civilians. What was the fault of Amrin? What was the fault of that uh, policeman who went on leave? What was the fault, fault of that Rahul Bhatt or Rajni Bhala? Or those who were serving there? So this terrorist violence, irrespective of its uh, target, has to be condemned by all and one and civil society has to be engaged and we also members of the civil society have to contribute to building mutual confidence and mutual uh, understanding between various communities who exist as a civilization of kashmir thank you very much thank you very much uh, thank you very much indeed May I request Kapil Kaksap to offer his comments and then we have other friends. Kapil Kaksap. Thank you very much, Shasab. Firstly, uh, let me, as always, congratulate you for getting us together, for sharing a few thoughts. I have, uh, my burden has been lightened somewhat by uh, Ban Sahib already enumerating before us. Uh, a few thoughts for our consideration, uh, but I'm a little disappointed that my uh, my colleague, my brother, uh, someone who I really admire in, in his multifaceted dimensions, seems to think that the problem of Kashmiri Pandit killings is only a civil society problem. The government of India has no role in it. The ruling dispensation has no role in it. The state of Jammu and Kashmir, led today by the lieutenant governor, has no role in it. There is only the civil society. With. Uh, this I have a problem with. And let me explain why. First and foremost, why is it that there is not one single Kashmiri Pandit who was targeted for 18 long years after Nadi Mag in 2003 until October 2021? Why is it so? If the answer to that is actions which have taken place, and I'm glad Ashok Bansa mentioned August 9, 2019, I think that is the, the, the culmination point of all the peace, peace efforts, stability and tranquility which prevailed, relatively speaking. The insurgency was still on. Let's not forget that. The dismissal of the government in June 2018, imposition of the governor's rule, thereafter 2019 actions of humiliation, of removal of the dignity and self-respect of 14 million people of Jammu and Kashmir, followed by a series of administrative orders relating to jobs, relating to lands, related to demographic changes, oh, sorry, how much were the... justified, how much was not justified, it's not important. But the key issue is that the Kashmiri, average Kashmiri feels deeply hurt and humiliated. And in a sense, that reaction is coming somewhat belatedly because there was a two-year lockdown, pandemic-induced, and uh, 5th August 2019-induced. So a new strategy has been uh, evolved. 
uh, and therefore the help of the Pakistanis who are ready for with their low cost, high return policy on Kashmir has brought the situation where it is, where at least three of us, Sunil Bhattal Sahib, Ashok Bhan Sahib and myself, who are Kashmiri pundits, feel deeply pain, not because it's a sectarian communal issue. It is also an issue of humanity, of humanism, of higher levels of politics, which must visit and embrace us in multifaceted ways. My worry today is that there is, now I'm making points, I'm not giving advice. There is a very high level of deep suspicion between the majority community and the Kashmiri Pandit community. This is so hard that it can be cut with a knife. So we have to first address this. And I think that point was also made by Pansar when he said, need for inter-community dialogue. Yes, this is the time for the dialogue. That is my first suggestion. And OP Shah Saab, I think this could be well an opportunity between now and the onset of winter, a series of small conversations between members of civil society of India, the civil society of Kashmir to the extent it can, because my own inference, I can give you, time doesn't permit, civil society has been destroyed by the ruling dispensation of India. I'm talking about civil society of Kashmir. I interacted with that civil society for 20 long years, and so did Ashok Ban Sahib and Bhattar Sahib. They were vibrant. They were out with comments, out with suggestions. All of them were not terrorists, as made out by Kashmir Files. That the top leadership of India endorses Kashmir Files and says that, please, everyone must watch it, without talking about the flip side. Of course, the main side is absolutely no one in this group will ever disagree that it represents very poignantly and emotionally the trauma that the Kashmiri Pandit community went through. But the flip side is where the poison darts are. That every member of the Kashmiri majority community is a terrorist, is a jihadi. The mainstream leaders are linked with the jihadis and the terrorists. And there is no hope because this is the prevalent overwhelming sentiment in Kashmir that the majority community cannot be trusted. Now that I can put forth before this thoughtful group is the biggest toxicity which has been introduced in Kashmir. And it will take years of efforts of Opisha and others to remove that toxicity. And it has not come from within Kashmir. It is, it is exogenous to Kashmir. It's from coming from the ruling dispensation and their supporters in the rest of the country. I say it without mincing any words. The third point that arises, and I think here is where civil society can also play a role. Yes, dealing with the elders in, in the majority community may be a thought, but my own experience of dealing with the civil society at an individual level and subgroup level uh, is that they are hugely alienated they are hatred-filled, they are fearful. The media in Kashmir is virtually an intellectual jail, deeply ensconced. In. You can't file a decent story. If you do, next day you will be at the police station to explain who are your sources, where did you get this information? So I'm sorry, I mean, let's, let's not live in cuckoo land. Let's live in the realistic land. The realistic land is that Kashmir situation is grim. It will take all the efforts of a million OP Shahs to get anywhere near having meaningful communications with the group. As far as the question of statehood is concerned, I do not think that's happening anytime soon. There is great hope that elections will take place. Please, you can quote me, you can write in bold letters in your report, O.P. Shah Saab, there will be no elections until the ruling dispensation has worked out to every single booth level that they are winning those elections or they are short of a few seats which they will manage to get from across the Peer Panchal Pass and the Banihal Pass. So therefore, there are no elections. There is no statehood. Continued alienation. The targeting of 
not just Kashmiri pundits. I'm sorry, we need to clarify. Kashmiri Sikhs have been targeted. Non-locals have been targeted. Poor people who earn their livelihood in the valley during summer months, whether they are carpenters, whether they are masons, whether they are plumbers from uh, Orissa, Jharkhand, UP or Bihar, about nearly four lakhs of them, they, they are there. And their representatives have also been killed. It's not just the Kashmiri Please let me Lastly, there has been an opinion expressed by many that all the Kashmiri pundits have fled. They have gone to Jammu. I'm sorry, this is not factually true. Fortunately, uh, my own efforts on the ground by sending friends of mine to camps where the migrant employees under the PM's package live, give me an understanding that not more than 30 to 40 percent of the people who are approximately 503,000 in the 5,300 uh, 5, number, not more than 30 to 40 percent of them have gone. There are also a large number of people who are employed in banks or in PSUs or in universities, colleges, who are in businesses. They still remain there, as do the 4,000 souls who have never migrated out. So while I give you a grim picture, I also give you a positive picture that there is hope, that not everyone has run away from there. And I think I conclude by saying this is a time for the Kashmiri pundits also not have this siege complex or a hostage complex and actually take risks which society demands of people in evolution of both societies and nations as great powers that we should be willing to take those risks because numbers are not too many, but getting out of the valley in fear and reintroducing 1990 Mark II will do more damage, not just to the Kashmiri pundits, but the Kashmiri society, indeed nation as well, because governments, whatever they may or may Please not be, don't last forever. They go away as they always do in a political uh, process of forward movement. So with these few thoughts and these few suggestions, I'd once again like to thank Opisha for giving me this opportunity. And I'd like to educate myself by learning from the perspective others have to offer. Thank you very much, Kapil Kak Saab. May I now request Mujaffar Shah Saab. Mujaffar Shah Saab. Mujaffar Shah Saab. Sir, good evening to everybody. I have just yeah, joined very late. Please. I just joined in. I would be grateful if I could hear one or two uh, speakers more so that I would get the feel of what is being talked and what is happening. I thought and I, I can you come back again. Uh, Mujaffar Shah Saab, you come back again, but offer your initial remarks now. Well, what I would say is I have just heard uh, uh, good evening to everybody in Delhi and wherever people are on this uh, uh, Zoom conference and to all our uh, respected panelists there, all our friends. Well, I, I heard uh, uh, Kapil Kakji uh, for, uh, in the last two or three minutes, and I can only say here, being here on ground zero, that yes, though the situation is um, uh, tense in, uh, in some parts, and uh, uh, whatever has happened now, uh, unfortunate that we were not in a position till now to identify this unidentified uh, gunman who is uh, killing people uh, at his own time, at his own choice, and at his own given place, he can he can select the target. And uh, uh, what I can what I can see is because we we dealt with it very, in a very uh, a very quiet manner, and we did our uh, part of it. And we are not for we are requesting our pundit brethren not to believe. Uh, and what we saw here, uh, and what Kapil Kak Saab also uh, mentioned that uh, what is being shown or what is being reported is not absolutely correct. Not so many people have left as yet, but yes, whatever our uh, Pandit brethren have experienced and what they have said, I think they are very correct in their way that the state has failed to give them uh, to protect their lives. This is a, this is the, there is no two ways about it because both 
our uh, uh, our pandit brother who got shot in chadura as well as the uh, the lady uh, our dogra sister from samba both of them and their families they had been consistently requesting the lg administration and their respective district administrations that they are feeling uneasy there is uneasy calm they should be shifted from these vulnerable spots and no action was taken on that that is a gross violation of state craft that has been committed by the people whosoever they are in charge and this is a fact that these hopefully such kind of killings could have been avoided had had proper action been taken though i can also say that we have had very close to 18 17 or 18 killings since january 2019 and out of those killings more than 12 or 13 have been of muslims so this is a tragedy in kashmir on every home it is a tragedy for every one of us there is no question of pandit or a muslim or a sikh or a christian here it is a tragedy with every household here and the bottom line is that new delhi our friends from new delhi have failed in tackling the situation in kashmir they have failed in governing the the governing kashmir the way it is supposed to be governed this is what i can tell you sitting right here and whatever demands have been made by these employees well they are not wrong in what they are saying and i am also not wrong in saying very directly very bluntly very openly that our prime minister prime minister's office home minister our lieutenant governor his uh, administration here have failed not only our pandit brother they have failed every citizen of kashmir this is what i can give you my opening remarks on that rest i will talk when i hear some people more and i'll give my more views on that thank you thank you very much id khazuria saab from jammu would you like to offer your comments id khazuria saab id khazuria saab advocate ajay singh ha ah, hello hello ah, ji ji acha ha ha meri wo ha khazuria saab 3 minutes saab saab साथ साहब और बाकी सभी जो हाजरीन है सब पैनल में मैं सभी को नमस्कार करता हूं और जो टॉपिक है आज के वेबिनार का के वे आउट हम इस वे आउट के लिए सैतालीस से ढूंढ रहे हैं हमारा रास्ता कौन सा होगा और आज तक हम किसी वे आउट पर नहीं पहुंच पा रहे हैं और दिन ब दिन हमारे साथ मुश्किलें बढ़ रही है शाह साहब आप पिछले महीने टूर करने आए थे तो आपने मीटिंगें की तो मैंने वहां राय रखी थी कि जो कुछ पहले था उससे ज्यादा सीरियस बात हो चुकी है और आज ही मैं ये कह रहा चाहता हूँ बोलिए कुछ पहले था उससे ज्यादा सीरियस और हाँ बोल रहा हूँ जी मैं नहीं मेरी आवाज नहीं आ रही है बोलिए अब आ रही है आवाज आ रही है मेरी हाँ हाँ आ रही है हाँ मैं कह रहा हूँ कि मैं कह रहा हूँ कि जे मैंने पिछले हफ्ते आप पिछले महीने जब लास्ट हफ्ते में आए थे तो मैंने उस वक्त भी ये कहा था कि जम्मू कश्मीर में हालात ज्यादा सीरियस है सब पीछे से ज्यादा सीरियस है और अब मैं आज भी ये कह रहा हूँ कि जम्मू में और कश्मीर में हालात ज्यादा संगीन है ज्यादा सोचने वाले हैं ज्यादा ज्यादा तकलीफ दे है ज्यादा लोगों के अंदर ज्यादा गुस्सा बढ़ रहा है और जिसे नकार
प्लीज कंटिन्यू आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है अभी नहीं मिल पा रहे जी जी आवाज नहीं आ रही है अब आ रही है तो मैं ये कहना जा रहा हूं कि हमारे सामने जो वे आउट है वो एक ही रास्ता है वो है डायलॉग जिसके लिए गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आज तक पिछले आठ साल से सोच नहीं पाई कि हमने डायलॉग करना है या जम्मू कश्मीर को कंकर करना है वो जो वहां से पॉलिसी चल रही है वो कंकर करने की है वो जीतने की है कि जम्मू कश्मीर को जीत लिया जाए और आज भी इतनी मौतें हो चुकी इतने शहीद हो चुके अभी भी प्राइम मिनिस्टर की तरफ से एक भी शब्द हमारे लिए नहीं जनता के लिए नहीं आया हमें बड़ी खुश इस बात का शुक्रगुजार है कि उत्तर काशी में एक बस गिर गई वहां जाने चली गई खजूरिया साहब आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब को अफसोस हो गया लेकिन जाने फिर क्या बात हो रही है मैं तो अभी आई है हाँ जल्दी से शेष करिए कंप्लीट कर दीजिए तो मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि जब ये एक तरफ तो हमने जहां की लीडरशिप को डिसक्रेडिट कर दिया डिफेम कर दिया और नया कोई आदमी हमारा डायलॉग वाला कोई ग्रुप नहीं निकला कोई ढूंढा नहीं और जब तक डायलॉग नहीं होगा चाहे वो इंटरनेशनल है चाहे इंडिया और जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों के दरमियान है जब तक कोई डायलॉग नहीं होता तो हमें बे आउट मिलता मिलेगा कहां से हम तो अपनी जगह बोलते हैं अपनी जगह सेमिनार भी करते हैं लेकिन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने तो अभी अभी जो फैसला किया हाई लेवल मीटिंग में वो अजीत डोवाल को भेजा तो कश्मीर में जाकर तो सिक्योरिटी देखोगे कैसे ठीक हो सकती है ये कोई नहीं सोचा कि लोगों के साथ बातचीत करने का रास्ता कोई ढूंढा जा सके और जो माइंड सेट है जहां पर जो कंकर करने का माइंड सेट है जब डिफेम करने का माइंड सेट है जो वो लोगों को कहीं नजदीक नहीं ला पाएगा इसलिए लोगों को अगर नजदीक लाना है तो हमें गन की पॉलिटिक्स को छोड़कर हम जो गन चलाने वाले लोग हैं हम उनसे भी कहते हैं कि गन कोई हल नहीं निकाली गन कैन नेवर रिजॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम नेवर कंट्रोल द ब्रेन ब्रेन टर्न द माउथ ऑफ द गन हमें आइडिया के साथ ही हम तब्दील कर सकते हैं सारे माहौल को और वो आइडिया ना सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट देना चाहती है ना बात करना चाहती है और ना ही जहां से कोई ऐसा ग्रुप बनाया जा रहा है जिसका जो कोई भी बोलने वाला है उसे डिफेम कर दिया गया है कि ये खागे ये झुके हैं ये बदमाश हैं तो फिर जम्मू कश्मीर में है कौन वो कौन ले जाएगा लोगों को आगे ये तो कोई ना कोई जकीन बनाने वाला ग्रुप तो बनाना पड़ेगा ना डायलॉग तो करना पड़ेगा ना किसी के साथ उनको मानना पड़ेगा कि ये जम्मू कश्मीर को रिप्रेजेंट कर सकते हैं जम्मू कश्मीर की जनता को किसी रास्ते पर ला सकते हैं शांति बहाल करवा सकते हैं ये यकीन नहीं हो रहा और हिंदुस्तान की बंदूक जो है वो दबा जा रही है इसलिए ये रास्ता नहीं है बे आउट एक ही है डायलॉग 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 जम्मू कश्मीर के आपस में डायलॉग जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों का हिंदुस्तान की जनता से डायलॉग और मैं उम्मीद करता हूं और अपील करता हूं कि हिंदुस्तान की जनता जो एक सौ तीस करोड़ है वो इस बात को समझे कि जम्मू कश्मीर जनता रहती है वहां पर हमें उसका उसे प्यार करना है उसे उसे जब तक वो नहीं उठेगी कि जम्मू कश्मीर का मसला हल किया जाए जम्मू कश्मीर में बातचीत का रास्ता खोला जाए जम्मू कश्मीर को कोई उसका हक है अगर तो उससे बात की जाए जब तक हिंदुस्तानी जनता हमारे साथ नहीं खड़ी होगी तो ये मसला हल नहीं हो सकता और बे आउट भी नहीं निकल सकता इसके साथ ही धन्यवाद आपका थैंक यू वेरी मच एनी अदर फ्रेंड फ्रॉम कश्मीर दिस्कशन इज ओपन फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम कश्मीर सजेद सजेद बोलना चाहोगे अभी इम्तियाज जस्ती है कोई हाँ हाँ बोलिए बुखारी साहब हाँ जी हाँ जी फरमाइए गुड इवनिंग शाह साहब 
आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कि आपने मुझे आज आमंत्रित किया है पहली बात तो यह है कि जो वे आउट इस वक्त टॉपिक है हमारा आज बार आप सबके सामने नाम फिर डिस्क्लोज कर दीजिए सबके लिए अनाउंस हो जाएगा जी सर आवाज आ रही है सर हाँ हाँ जी सर तो मैं बुखारी साहब बोल रहा हूँ बुखारी बोल रहा हूँ बारामला से तो सर पहली बात तो ये है कि जो इस वक्त घटनाएं हो रही हैं हम इसको इंसानियत की निगाह से देखते हैं धर्म की निगाह से नहीं देखते हैं इसमें सारे लोग मर जाते हैं मुसलमान है हिंदू है आ, हमारे पंडित भाई हैं सब लोग इसके जद में आ जाते हैं और हम इसकी कड़े शब्दों में मजम्मत करते हैं दूसरी बात यह है कि जो डिसकाउंटेंट है लोगों में जो लोग नाराज हैं मुझे लगता है कि जो सिविल सोसाइटी के लोग हैं बाकी जो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी से ताल्लुक रखते हैं जो लोग हैं यानी कि जो लोग बिल्कुल नाराज हैं जिनके पास रोजगार नहीं है जिनके पास कोई जरिया नहीं है तो उन तक पहुंचने की जरूरत है पॉलिसी में नरमी लाने की जरूरत है ताकि प्यार से मोहब्बत से लोगों का दिल जीता जाए और एक डायलॉग प्रोसेस शुरू करने की भी साथ साथ अशद जरूरत है ताकि इस से हमें निजात मिल सके जो कुछ भी हो रहा है तो ये इंसानियत के लिए ठीक नहीं हो रहा है हम इंसान को सिर्फ इंसानियत की निगाह से देखते हैं धर्म की निगाह से नहीं देखते हम मानवता पे यकीन रखने वाले लोग हैं कश्मीरियत सारी दुनिया में मशहूर है सारी दुनिया हमारी तारीफ करती है कि कितनी हॉस्पिटलिटी है उनमें बाकी चीजें जो है लेकिन जो नाराज लोग हैं उन तक पहुंचने की बहुत जरूरत है ताकि यहाँ पे पूरा जो सारे लोगों को जितने भी यहाँ पे जो ये यकीन रखते हैं जमहूरियत पे यकीन रखने वाले लोग हैं उनकी बात सुननी होगी और उनसे मिलना पड़ेगा उसके बाद ही कोई हल निकल सकता है पिछले जो 74 फोर ईयर्स से इस पे इतने आज तक वन अराउंड वन फिफ्टी जो राउंड हुए हैं टाकस के लेकिन वो फेल हो गए हैं तो इस वक्त बात ये है कि क्योंकि इसमें सिंसियरिटी नहीं थी अगर सिंसियरिटी से एक वातावरण ऐसा बनाया जाए जो सत्यता पे आधारित हो जिसमें मानवता को तरजीह दी जाएगी तो धर्म को साइड में रख के चाहे कोई भी धर्म हो उसको साइड में रख के मानवता के लिहाज से इस को देखा जाए तो ये बड़ी बात नहीं है इस पे ये हल हो सकता है इस पे सभी लोग एकजुट हो सकते हैं और इसका कोई समर्दान निकल सकता है थैंक यू शाह साहब थैंक यू वेरी मच अश्वनी जी अश्वनी चुरुंगो साहब अश्वनी जी Anybody else who would like to offer his comments now? Shah Sir, good evening. Good evening. Kaak Sir, Muzaffar Sir, or Ban Sir, के सामने कुछ बोलना तो मेरे लिए पहले आप अपना नाम अनाउंस कर दीजिए इनके सामने उनको तो कश्मीर का सब कुछ है लेकिन छोटी सी गुजारिश है हमने इतिहास चिश्ते साहब बोल रहे हैं जी इम्तिया चिश्ते अर्ज करा तो अभी खजूरिया साहब ने अभी एक बात की कि गन इज नॉट द सॉल्यूशन खजूरिया साहब से मैं ये पूछना चाहता हूँ ये किस गन की बात कर रहा है क्या यह लाइसेंसड गन है कि इलीगल गन है कि कोई गन अगर हम जर्नलाइज करें कोई भी गन सॉल्यूशन नहीं है दूसरी बात जो रिसेंटली यहाँ पे हमारे पंडित बदा भाई बहन जो है या उनके साथ कुछ जाति हुई है दो चार की मौत हुई है बहुत अफसोस है हम ये कभी नहीं चाहते हैं कि जो कश्मीरी पंडित भाई हमारा यहाँ पे हैं, जिसने हम पे विश्वास करके यहाँ पे इन हालातों में रहा है उसके साथ ऐसा हो जाए लेकिन मेरी एक गुजारिश है खासकर काक साहब से या जो हमारे कश्मीरी पंडित बरादर वातल जी हैं यहाँ पे 
जब कश्मीरी एक इनोसेंट मुसलमान मरता है हमने बहुत कम देखा इनके कंडमनेशन रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया से आए लेकिन जब कश्मीरी पंडित मरता है तो हम पे बोझ है कि आप कंडम करो हम तो कर लेते हैं कश्मीरी पंडित की मौत हुई तो हमें बहुत अफसोस हुआ हम शायद सड़कों पे भी निकल गए हमने उनके प्रोटेस्ट में भी शिरकत की नहीं आप जिन है हम आपके साथ हैं लेकिन जब एक कश्मीरी मुसलमान इनोसेंट के साथ ऐसा हो रहा है तो सेम थिंग हम चाहते हैं कि कश्मीरी पंडित भी दिल्ली या जम्मू में या रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया में बैठ के वही स्टैंड ले तो तभी ये जो टुगेदरनेस है जो हमारा भाईचारा है वो तभी कायम रहेंगे ये वन साइडेड नहीं है और जो बान साहब ने भी बता दिया और काक साहब ने बता दिया कि सबसे अगर कैजुअलिटी कश्मीर में हुई है वह सिविल सोसाइटी हुई है क्योंकि सिविल सोसाइटी से ही बातें निकलती थी समाधान निकल जाता था प्रॉब्लम्स का दोनों साइड से वेज आउट थे लेकिन पिछले कुछ सालों से वो श्रृंख चल, होती चली जा रही है तो सिविल सोसाइटी को वापस लेके आना उनको कॉन्फिडेंस में लेके आना वो वक्त की अहम जरूरत है दूसरी बात मैं ये कहना चाहता हूं हमने अभी ये देखा जो फिल्म आई है कश्मीर में तो बहुत सारे कम लोगों ने देखा है कि रेस्ट ऑफ कश्मीर बदा जो पंडित ब्रदर्स हैं उनसे मैं बोलना चाहता हूं कि हमने वो फिल्म नहीं देखी है क्योंकि बिना देखे ही हमें पता है कि नेरेटिव क्या होगा उसमें क्या दिखाया गया होगा सो कश्मीर में उस फिल्म का ज्यादा असर नहीं पड़ा है लेकिन रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया में जिस तरीके से नारेबाजी हुई जिस तरीके स्लोगनिंग हुई हमने उस वक्त जो सिविल सोसाइटी है आज मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है कि कश्मीर की सिविल सोसाइटी तो डैमेज हो चुकी है कैजुअलिटी हुई है यहाँ पे सिविल सोसाइटी की वट अबाउट द रेस्ट ऑफ द इंडिया वहां की सिविल सोसाइटी कब उठेगी कश्मीरियों के जख्म भरने के लिए आप हमेशा हमें खड़ा नहीं करेंगे भाई कोई मरा है तो आप खड़े हो जाओ आप क्यों नहीं खड़े हो जाते हैं हम खड़े हुए हैं हम खड़े हैं और खड़े रहेंगे इंसानियत के लिए लेकिन हमारी उम्मीद यह है कि आप भी हमारे लिए खड़े हो जाओ इससे ज्यादा तो इस वक्त कुछ नहीं बोल सकता हूं बाकी so, की बातें सुन लेंगे तो बात थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू इज अश्वनी जी प्रेजेंट किया अश्वनी चुरुंगू साहब मैंने जो कहा है मैं ये समझता हूँ मेरी जो इस वक्त में जिस आइडिया पर चलता हूं मैं जिस संस्था के कुदरत में और इंसानियत में इंटरडिपेंडेंस जो है मेन डेवलपमेंट का सोर्स है और दुनिया में कोई चीज ऐसी नहीं है कोई फिनमिना ऐसा नहीं है और ह्यूमन बीइंग में कोई ऐसी कैटेगरी नहीं है कोई ऐसा रिलीजन नहीं है कोई ऐसी आइडेंटिटी नहीं है जो इंटरडिपेंडेंट नहीं है आज पूरी वर्ल्ड जो है इंटरडिपेंडेंट वर्ल्ड है और आज की दुनिया में चाहे वो सरकारी गन है गवर्नमेंट की गन है चाहे वो कोई दूसरा कोई गन है गन जो है वो मसले का हल नहीं निकाल सकती है वो नुकसान कर सकती है वो इंसानियत को मार सकती है वो और किस्म का नुकसान कर सकती है लेकिन कहो कोई मसलों का हल निकालना वो नहीं निकाल सकती है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया अगर गन के साथ और हल कर निकालना चाहती तो वो क्यों नागालैंड में बातचीत का रास्ता अपना रही है वो बेशक जम्मू कश्मीर में उनको जिद है कि रास्ता नहीं अपनाना है नागालैंड में वो बातचीत का रास्ता अपना रही है वहां से आप सफा भी उन्होंने उठा लिया है इसलिए मेरा कहने का मतलब है कि गन कैन नेवर कंट्रोल द ब्रेन और ब्रेन का मतलब है कि आइडियाज आइडियाज प्ले द रोल और आइडियाज में डायलॉग जो है वो एक रास्ता है वो प्रोसेस है वो सिस्टम है कि डायलॉग ही दुनिया के मसले हल कर पाएगा डायलॉग ही हमारे मसले हल कर पाएगा और डायलॉग ही हमारे बीच के मसले हल कर पाएगा धन्यवाद थैंक यू खजूरिया साहब एडवोकेट अजय सिंह एडवोकेट अजय सिंह सुनील बतल साहब हाँ जी हाँ जी गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सर थैंक थैंक यू शाह साहब फॉर 
uh, inviting all of us to this session. And it, it's really good uh, hearing ideas from all of you and getting different viewpoints. Uh, I, I think we need to understand one thing here. Are we heading back? The statement that I got yesterday, I was speaking to somebody day before yesterday in Kashmir. <coughs> this gentleman tells me we are almost heading back to 90s. So are we really heading back there? That's a big question. And if that is correct, then it's a very serious issue. <coughs> we need to understand the root cause. I think the root, and, and this was, I will, the civil society, and we've been talking about the civil society here. The civil society was very active about four years back, 2016, 17. Uh, a lot of us would interact. We would physically go to Srinagar or we would meet here in Delhi. Um, and, and we were very, very engaged. But what has happened over the last two, three years, uh, we need to understand the root cause here. One, there was a big disconnect because of COVID. But before that, I think the root cause, and I will agree with Kapil Kak, sir, here, that the major root cause goes back to 370. I mean, we, the basic point, since the abrogation of 370, people have started, people in JNK have started getting delineated. They, they feel alienated. They feel out of the system. And that confidence is not <coughs> back again. So these things have piled up. There is also a fear, latest what has happened is there's a fear that there's going to be a demographic change. And again, reality and narratives are two different things. And this is in Kashmir, this is in the rest of India also, that we all know that today, especially with social media being active and vested interests, political parties having their IT cells, IT media cells, uh, the, uh, and our news channels. And to that. that creates a lot of lot of narrative and it gets rather than reality it is the narratives which run the show and it is the narrative which has gone around that, that there's going to be a demographic change because if we also look at the victims in the past uh, four five months if we look at the victims of these recent killings they are somehow connected either with the jobs or they're coming and working there they're not random people they're not people except a couple of cases where maybe it was the Bindru's killing, where Bindru was stationed there. He was not in a job. But I think the target is people who are either outsiders who come from outside Kashmir or people who are there for jobs or who are there for permanent uh, living there. So that narrative of demographic change is playing a big impact. And to add to that, there is also an instigative factor. An instigative factor like the film that um, Chisti Saab just talked about. Uh, I know a lot of people may not have watched that film in Kashmir, but again, there are narratives against that film. The film, that film has created an impact. And today what we are saying is possibly, I wouldn't uh, shy away to say that some of the impact, that, that film, has, that kind of damage that film has done, uh, a part of the impact today is because of that. So we all know these things, we all know that, but with this recent spate of killings, it is also giving rise to, are we looking at Exodus 8.0 now? Possibly yes, possibly no, but there are good reasons for if people want, people are leaving for the safety of their lives. I, th I think they have their own reasons. Sitting here in Delhi, I might say, no, they should not leave the job, they should not come out. But then the person who is sitting there, who is risking his life, he, he probably knows better than me. Mm. Again, all these factors, this further exodus, these are going to lead to further polarization. We know that there, the civil society has been rattling for the last few years, but then again, this polarization is increasing. And the more this polarization, the deeper and the bigger the problem gets complicated. So we are leading from a smaller problem, complex problem to a much more complex problem. And to add to what Mr. Kapil Kak said and what Mr. Ban also said, I wouldn't blame only the civil society. The civil society is not coming forward because we are helpless. The civil society probably feels helpless now. Three years back, 
a lot of us were very active but today a lot of us are even feeling disinterested because we know nothing is going to happen nobody is going to listen to us and we also feel directionless so it is it is the government which is to be blamed not the civil society it is a clear cut case of misgovernance what are the steps if if there are so many killings and and again i would not say a muslim killing or a sikh killing or a hindu killing no a life lost is a life lost it's a mother who's lost a son it's a child who's lost a father irrespective of the community from where this person belongs uh, both the um, the the people who who are the police who policemen who've been killed so basically this needs to be somehow addressed and the mitigation has to come from the government and the mitigation is either we're talking about short term or long term and again as mr ban uh, said engagement is the key here we have to engage people we have to do the dialogue but dialogue with whom the golden question is dialogue with whom situation the events of 2019 have led to a situation today where there is a political vacuum there is nobody to have dialogue with does government does the central government today know who they should have the dialogue with that is a bigger question as kadurya saab said we should have the dialogue the bigger question is ki dialogue kiske sath kare we have to first identify who should we having the dialogue with so i think with that those are the steps which need to be mitigated but i think the bigger question is that the administration the governance needs to wake up we feel and and, and why people are people are frustrated why employees are saying we want to go back because they are saying seeing there is inaction rather than letting them voice their thoughts you are just locking them up in a camp locking up people in a camp is not going to help so that's not redressal the redressal has to come by way of confidence building engagement and positive steps so i i think those are the thoughts i had i would leave it open for others to share their thoughts thank you thank you shahzad thank you very much um is any friend from kashmir interested in offering his comments now stop professor moju saab is he there मुझू साहब इज ऑन म्यूट मुझू साहब प्लीज ऑन म्यूट शाह साहब एम एस गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन जय सिंह फ्रॉम जम्मू थैंक यू शाह साहब i joined the meeting a bit late so i missed uh kak swab and ban saab speak however uh, i mean the recent killings have been a bit disconcerting and uh, the general situation also appears to be a something of a concern i hail from udampur and for the first time in my lifetime i've seen a bomb blast happen at slakia pok which is like basically one of the most frequented places in udampur uh but i don't want to stress too much on that because i believe uh, almost everyone has spoken enough uh on the subject except for the fact what uh, muzaffar shah saab was saying that uh, out of the 18 odd killings which have happened recently about 13 odd happen to be kashmiri muslims and this is a discussion which i had with a kashmiri kashmiri pandit friend who lives in europe when he was sending me various news articles of uh, kashmiri pandit killings which were happening or other non muslim killings so to say however if we sift through the numbers what we see is the majority of people who suffered still happen to be kashmiri muslims uh and someone has left a comment in the chat box right now and there's a single comment which says that if kashmiri muslims support the hindus there then it will probably lead to some sort of resolution i think it's not about whether kashmiri muslims are supporting hindus or not it's just 
that when a non muslim is killed the propaganda machinery basically runs at very high speed and at an intensity which gives an impression that somehow kashmiri muslims are complicit or desire uh you know in some way they are complicit in whatever these killings are happening uh, however if we actually look at the numbers they happen to be the people who have suffered the most and continue to suffer the most so i think that should put the things in some kind of perspective apart from that i just want to leave with a small uh, thought i had met op shah saab recently and uh, he had very kindly given his uh, recent book which he had edited and the introduction to that book he is basically referred something which otherwise is also very close to my heart that if we truly want to resolve any issue you have to speak to all the stakeholders concerned i mean we've been talking to kashmiris we've been talking to people across the border and on this side of the border for over 70 years and we are still where we started or probably in a more worse off situation so it may be a good time now to understand who are the stakeholders who have not been considered in this conflict resolution process i mean pa- former pakistani ambassador to united states of america uh, hussein hakani saab in his book magnificent delusions he talks about certain such stakeholders and i mean it's not just his book uh, there are books and articles replete on the subject that are intelligence agencies and otherwise also a lot of other organizations whose influence power resources all come from the fact that this conflict continues to persist so until and unless we can probably offer a better deal until and unless peace can be more profitable i am not really sure uh getting into esoteric terms and principles is going to really lead to a resolution of the problem i think i'll end on that note thank you thank you very much john dayal would you like to offer your comments now so i needed to go but i must say as always your webinars are very educative and i thought here marshal john, hmm. john dayal sitting in a very very heated town called new delhi is is burning here both politically and thermometrically uh, but as i was saying it's always very really educative to listen to a marshal kapil kak and uh, my brother ashok ban about well, but having said that i was really a bit surprised at the marshals i can't say uh, good words but the way he saw the film i've not seen the film i must admit but i used to be a documentary filmmaker for for a decade or so in the 90s and the camera and the editing are what make or what editorialize any film whether it's a feature film or a documentary <clears throat> somebody could make a equally powerful evocative film on the children who were wounded by the pellet guns and it would bring tears to everybody's mind but i i think politically i would say that the film has been created financed and directed at this juncture to keep a certain level of temperature as a uh i think uh, all, all of you have agreed that the government is at this moment trying to see what sort of a ground change it can be, bring about what demographic change what constraints it can create alter or whatever what uh, gerrymandering it can do so well, all those things are there but, but just now in this very fraught situation india is boiling pakistan is boiling everywhere there is a considerable amount of heat generated the fact that this webinar is taking place at all and the polarization is not as sharp in this discussion as i have often noticed i i see them as good signs the fact that people are saying that you need to talk to everybody 
the fact that here in this webinar, people are saying that Muslims are in fact purely numerically the larger community to have suffered in the last 30 years is a fact. In all cases, by all means, including uh, the military. So those are positive things that I think we can build on it. I wish I could come to Kashmir and participate in the civil society movement. I must tell you, when you talk of civil society in Kashmir, please understand the civil society in Delhi is almost dead. Things. The civil society in Bombay, Bangalore, Calcutta, Hyderabad, of them. And these were centers where there were voluble. Jantar Bhante was alive every day. And now, civil society is walking about and you are arrested, the ED raids you, whatever. You, you see, and I don't know if you can read them in Kashmir, but you, you get a feel of that. So, just to blame the Kashmir is not alive and kicking and partying. Just to deny the fact that civil society itself is one of the victims of the regime. And I think it's the victim of the regime. The regime doesn't want civil society to be able to intervene or whatever. This is what I wanted to say. I wish you could not as the only so I was going to say. Thank you very much. Mujaffar Shah Sahab, would you like to add any more points? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. Yeah. I, what uh, I heard uh, uh, our disrespected panel. Excuse. I like to bring out what uh, our dear friend from Sri is this up? Things are very, 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 very. No gun is a solution. Absolutely. And secondly, one-sided condemnation. We really thought about. Very correctly said so. Secondly, I would say when we talk about alienation and all, seventy. Definitely alienated the civil society. Delimitation added to the alienation of the civil society. No doubt. And then, unfortunately, unfortunately, the way that virtually killed the so we will, That will be a discussion on the Kashmir file and all that we can have it on a on, we, that, that can be a separate discussion. But today, the it's subject of like press now is the way out. Remember here, we are of one single. Uh, uh, Muzaffar, a minute, a uh, I request uh, some viewers. So please switch off the... Uh, my dear friend Ashok Ban has talked about and Kapit Kaki... Muzaffar sir, aap do minutes ruk liye jiye. Shah sir, aap switch off your TV and say... Yeah. Yes, Muzaffar Shah sir, please continue. Kapit Kaki TV chal raha hai sir. Please switch off the TV. So, boss, so it's not a idea. I'm going to ask you guys to say, Sahib, aap mute kar liye jiye. Surinka, Surinka ji hai, inko mute kar lijiye aap. Shah sahab. Ji. Surinka ji ko mute kariye, mute kariye. Surinka ji ko. Yes, please. Shah sahab. I think it's still on. Yeah. Anyway, well, I try to speak loudly. Well, all our uh, distinguished panel here today is of one single view. That is inter-community dialogue. Inter-community dialogue. Surinder sir, please, you can mute your mind. One community dialogue is started. And that should be, that should be started in Srinagar, in Jammu, as well as Delhi. All of us, I can say, all of us together, 
उसके बाद छोटे से बेटा आर कैपेबल ऑफ स्टार्टिंग एन इंटरचेंज ऑफ डायलॉग we don't need the government's help to do that it can be done and civil society can be brought onto the rails back onto the rails the <laughs> state told you 370 जो फर्ज़ आप जो फर्ज़ आप रुक लीजिए दो मिनट सुरेंद्र साहब आप टीवी बंद कर दीजिए प्लीज हम सुनना चाहते हैं हम टीवी देखना नहीं चाहते हैं टीवी बंद कर दो तुम्हारा आवाज आ रहा है सुरेंद्र साहब की माइक ऑन है शाह साहब इट इज फ्रॉम सुरेंद्र कोई सुरेंद्र साहब हैं जो आईफोन से कनेक्टेड है क्या या मैंने कह दिया उनको प्लीज सर आई विल अगेन आई विल अगेन री व्हाट ऑल माय डिस्टिंग्विश पैनल हैज सेड वन एंड ऑल रोल ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी हैज टू बी ब्रॉट बैक ऑन द रेल्स number 2 inter community dialogue has to start well i can tell you without the interference of the government or without even any help the help that they can give us is that they let us free to hold these dialogues so that the that these dialogues are held in srinagar in jammu and in delhi and all of us here on this particular show सुरेंद्र जी को थोड़ा म्यूट कर लीजिए तभी हम एक दूसरे की बात सुन पाएंगे मैंने कह दिया उनको ऐसा लग रहा है कि सपोर्टाज हो रहा है ये प्रोग्राम हाँ प्लीज एनी इज एनी वन एल्स वुड लाइक स्पीक कपिल साहब कपिल साहब सुनील शाह साहब आई ऑलरेडी फुल माय थॉट्स आई थिंक आई थिंक दिस i would just add that as a wrap up we all agree that there has to be an inter community dialogue there has to be more engagement and involvement and i really appreciate mr muzaffar shah's offer of uh, getting engaged in such dialogues and hosting them 
either in Srinagar or in Jammu, or for that matter, we can do these in Delhi. As well. So I would, I would look forward to one of such events happening where we can all come on a platform and voice for the power of Sir, Krishna. Namaskar. Hare Krishna. Right. I, think, I think that's it from me, Shah Sir. Yeah. Uh... Is there any, would you like to say anything? Or shall I make the concluding remarks? Mr. Kailas Jalan would like to speak, I understand. Is Mr. Jalan there? Yes, sir. Yeah, speak for a minute or so, please. Sir, I want to say that what is happening in Kashmir, कश्मीरी हिंदू भाइयों पर जो अत्याचार हो रहा है वहां के यदि मुस्लिम भाई लोग भी यदि इनके सपोर्ट में यदि कुछ प्रोटेक्स करते हैं तो इसका आतंकवाद के ऊपर बहुत बड़ा इफेक्ट आ सकता है तो मैं यही चाहता हूं चेष्टा कर करके मुस्लिम भाइयों को भी हिंदू के सपोर्ट में आना चाहिए और प्रोटेस्ट करना चाहिए बस यही कहना चाहूंगा सर धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच सर मैं भी एक बात करना चाहता हूं प्लीज मैंने अभी बता दिया है कि हम खड़े हैं जहां पे इनोसेंट किलिंग हो रही है हम उनको कंडेम कर रहे हैं सर आप कब कर लोगे जब यहां पे कोई इनोसेंट किलिंग होती है मुसलमानों की इनोसेंट किलिंग होती है आप सिर्फ मुसलमानों को खड़ा क्यों करना चाहते हैं कि आप कंडेम कर लीजिए जो कुछ हुआ है जब हम हम यहां पे मुसलमान कोई इनोसेंट मर रहा है तो आप खड़े क्यों नहीं होते आप तो मेजॉरिटी में है हम तो आपके छोटे भाई हैं आप तो हमारे बड़े भाई हैं हमेशा आप कश्मीरी मुसलमानों पे एक बोझ डालते हैं कि आप खड़े हो जाओ आप झंडा लेके खड़े हो जाओ आप कब हो जाओगे जब हम पे मुसीबतें आती है आप खड़े क्यों नहीं होते हैं बॉम्बे से एक डायरेक्टर आया यहां पे हमारे कश्मीरी भाई प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे हैं उसने पार्टिसिपेट किया बॉम्बे पहुंच गया फाइव स्टार एसी कमरे में बैठ के आई स्टैंड विद नुपुर शर्मा जिसने हमें जख्म दिया है और वो बॉम्बे पहुंच के ही बोल रहा है आई स्टैंड विद नुपुर ऐसे आप चाहते हैं कि मुसलमान आपके साथ आए हम कश्मीरी आपके लिए खून दे आप सिर्फ खड़े हो जाए आप सिर्फ पसीना बन बहा दीजिए हमारे लिए हम आपको खून दे देंगे लेकिन आप खड़े ही नहीं होते आप सिर्फ हमेशा बोलते हैं कि कश्मीरी मुसलमानों को खड़ा होना चाहे आप बड़े कब हो जाओगे आप हम पे रहम कर लीजिए हमारे जख्मों पे आप आई मीन वो आप नमक छिड़क रहे हैं ऊपर से मैं चाहता हूं मैं खड़ा हो जाऊं मैं अपने कश्मीरी पंडित भाइयों के लिए अपनी जान दे दूंगा लेकिन कश्मीरी पंडित या कश्मीरी हिंदू भी मेरा जब भाई मर जाता है तब आप भी जान दे दो जान नहीं तो कम से कम पसीने अपने बहाव हमारे हक के लिए बस इतना ही कहना है सर और किसी भाई को कुछ कहना है डॉक्टर सुनीलम प्लीज मैं तो माफी चाहता हूं क्योंकि ये नेट काम नहीं कर रहा था और मैं काफी लेट छोड़ा लेकिन सेंटर फॉर पीस एंड प्रोग्रेस ने जो मीटिंग बुलाई है बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी थी और जो अभी अंतिम वक्ता बोल रहे थे मैं उनके पास से पूरी तरीके से सहमत हूँ ये बात पूरे देश के अंदर जो लोग हैं कि वहां पर जब कश्मीरी मुसलमानों की जब हत्या होती है तो फिर पूरे देश को भी तकलीफ होनी चाहिए जैसे कश्मीरी पंडितों की हत्या हो रही है गलत है उसका विरोध किया जाना चाहिए लेकिन उसी तरीके से कश्मीरी मुसलमानों के जो आतंकवाद के शिकार बनते हैं या जो सीमा पर टेररिज्म का शिकार बनते हैं उनको भी जो है उनके साथ भी देश को खड़ा होना चाहिए और हमें इस बात की बहुत शर्मिंदगी है आ, मैं बहुत सारे कार्यक्रमों के अंदर रहा हूँ पिछले दिनों कई चैनल के ऊपर जहाँ पर कश्मीरी पंडितों को लेकर के बात हुई है तो वो उनके साथ में खड़ा होना जरूरी है होना चाहिए लेकिन पूरा देश कश्मीरी जो है मुसलमानों के साथ में खड़ा क्यों ना हो और ऐसी स्थिति में जबकि ये कहा जाता है कि पार्टीशन के बाद से आज तक अब वो फिगर जो है वो तो एमनेस्टी के लोग भी कंफर्म नहीं करते हैं पचास हजार से एक लाख के फिगर उसको बताते हैं या जो मिसिंग लोग हैं पांच से दस लोग हैं जो ये सब जो बात है इसके ऊपर मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि एक कसम से जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी है या जो केंद्र सरकार है वो जो एक नैरेटिव बनाना चाहती है अब वो उसमें हम फंस जाते हैं अब वो नैरेटिव इसलिए बनाना चाहती है कि देखो जी जो है 
हम तो कश्मीर के साथ रखा हुए हैं लेकिन जो है कश्मीर पंडितों के साथ मुसलमान ही खड़ा हुआ है ये फैक्चुअली गलत है और मुझे लगता है कि ये हम लोगों की जिम्मेदारी ये भी होनी चाहिए कि हम लोग इंटरफेट मीटिंग्स करें वो डायलॉग करें वो बहुत बढ़िया बात है लेकिन हमारी ज्यादा जिम्मेदारी पूरे देश के अंदर है जम्मू कश्मीर के अंदर जा करके हम अगर कुछ करते हैं तो ठीक है एक सिम्बोलिज्म का भी एक अपना महत्व होता है लेकिन हम लोगों को अपने अपने इलाके के अंदर जैसे मैं अगर भोपाल के अंदर हूँ और भोपाल के अंदर मैं कुछ कर सकता हूँ या मध्य प्रदेश में हूँ या देश भर के जो भी इलाके में साथी कर सकते हैं तो उन्हें एक कश्मीर के जो इशू है उसको प्रॉपर परस्पेक्टिव के अंदर देश के लोगों के साथ में रखना चाहिए और वो तब संभव होगा जो भी शाह साहब ने एक प्रयास किया था अभी कलकत्ता के अंदर एक पूरा जो पाया था जो है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इस तरीके के डायलॉग जो है उसके बारे में भी हमको सोचना चाहिए जो इमीडिएट इशू है कश्मीरी पंडितों का वो तब ठीक है लेकिन ये सॉल्यूशन जो है वो तब निकलेगा जब कश्मीरी एज सच जिसमें कि कश्मीरी ब्राह्मण भी हों और कश्मीरी मुस्लिम भी हों अब वो जब तक उनका इस देश के लोगों के साथ में इंटरेक्शन नहीं होगा और जब तक जो भारतीय अपने आप को संबोधते हैं उनको एक दुख और दर्द जो वहां के कश्मीरी का है वो अगर वो महसूस नहीं करेंगे कि कितने भय के साथ रहना पड़ता है अपना जीवन पूरी तरीके से अनिश्चित है तो तब तक बात बनेगी नहीं तो मैं ये वाली बात आपसे कहना चाहता हूँ इसके अंदर जो भी भूमिका ओपी शाह साहब तय करेंगे हम लोग बांग्लादेश भारत पाकिस्तान पीपुल्स फोरम में भी साथ में काम करते हैं और शाह साहब का बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन है इस इनिशियटिव के अंदर और डायलॉग के अंदर इंटरफेट डायलॉग के अंदर तो मैं चाहता हूं कि हम सब लोग जो भी कुछ निर्णय करें उसके अंदर मैं साथ रहूंगा लेकिन मेरा इन्फेसिस कश्मीर जम्मू कश्मीर के अंदर जितना रहेगा देश भर के अंदर ज्यादा रहेगा क्योंकि लोगों की समझ कश्मीर के बारे में एकदम अलग है यहाँ एक ही बात कहते हैं कि आप जो है कश्मीर मांगोगे तो छीर देंगे और दूध मांगोगे तो खीर देंगे ये यहाँ के डायलॉग है और ये संग ने प्रचारित करने का काम किया है तो जो नैरेटिव है यहाँ पर पूरे देश के अंदर वो नैरेटिव बीजेपी का नैरेटिव चलता है वो सेक्युलर नैरेटिव नहीं है वो फैक्ट्स के ऊपर आधारित नैरेटिव नहीं है उस नैरेटिव को कैसे बदला जाए ताकि लोगों के मन में एक सेंसिटिविटी पैदा हो उस सवाल के ऊपर कि अगर वहां पर मुसलमान मारा जाता है तो वो भी हमारा भाई है वो भी जो है हमारा एक को सिटीजन है ये भावना जब तक नहीं आएगी तब तक बात बनने वाली नहीं है केवल हम कश्मीर जा करके कोई एक्टिविटी करके इवेंट हो सकता है और उसका अपना महत्व है मैं उससे इनकार नहीं करता हूँ लेकिन मुझे तो लगता है कि ऑल इंडिया लेवल पे ज्यादा प्रोग्रेस ज्यादा इंटरेक्शन करने की हमको जरूरत है शुक्रिया थैंक यू वेरी मच एनी वन एल्स वी है फाइव minutes more in hand is there anybody else who would like to offer his comment thank you very much indeed um, we had a useful dialogue and uh, the at the end of the dialogue what appeared was that every one is interested in the dialogue and mujaffar shah saab wants to assist anyone prepared to collaborate with anyone for dialogue anywhere in the country he says not only he will come but he will also support and he is prepared to join hands with anyone the substance of the discussions appear to be that we have to create a set, situation in which the confidence and trust of the people is restored back today we have crisis of confidence we don't have trust in each other that has to be restored we have to share the pains and pleasure of both kashmiri muslims and kashmiri hindus and kashmiri pandits and all other inhabitants of jammu and kashmir somehow or the other this message has to be sent very loudly as loudly as possible that the government of india and other people who matter need to be in constant touch with all stakeholders and that is absolutely essential we had a useful uh, meaningful discussion 
I hope and trust we'll continue with these discussions in future as well. Thank you very much once again for joining this discussion and see you Thank soon. You, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Shukriya, Shukriya. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.